Mass Audubon Salt Marsh Science Project started in 1996 when local teachers wanted to connect their students to local ecosystems and help them learn more about their own backyards. Many of the techniques that were used by professional scientists were things that middle school and high school students could do. The study of Phragmites, which is an invasive plant and a threat to local ecosystems. Phragmites often grows in places where tidal flow has been blocked, where roads or railroads were built through a marsh that creates conditions that that favor the growth of Phragmites. We selected sites that had tidal restrictions and were high priorities for restoration with the intent of monitoring before and after restoration. Each year, a different class of students comes out to collect that data and it's a contribution to the wider community. Transects one, two, and three are affected by the culvert that goes underneath the road. Right? So there's human impact to transects one, two, and three. No human impact to transect zero, that's why it's our control group. And it grew from those first original two schools to uh, about a dozen schools around the Great Marsh and as far south as Boston, uh, monitoring salt marshes in their own towns. That became a part of the Plum Island Ecosystems long-term ecological research with funding from the Ni National Science Foundation. The way we're going to measure the salinity of the water that's collected in the wells through these tiny little holes and the bottoms are capped off. So when we first started studying this transect, that set of wells was in a monoculture of Phragmites, meaning there was nothing but Phragmites growing there. It was all Phragmites. And this set of wells was on the edge of the patch of Phragmites. So you can just picture that patch all the way up to here. Even just look at the wells and say, Things have changed a lot. I believe this happened since the increased water flow came from the widening of the culvert. 21 meters of this 30 meter transect were either bare or completely submerged with no plant life at all. This ponding could be due to runoff from the road, which is close by, or it could be due in part to changes in sea level. The salinity here ranges from 20 to 35 parts per thousand with an average of 28.8. So it is actually higher than the reference trend. The answer to our question of whether the improvements in the culverts have made a difference at our two sites is a resounding yes. On Town Farm Road, we have seen huge declines in two out of the three transects, with one transect being clear Phragmites for the fifth consecutive year. These results support our hypothesis that the increase in tidal flow through the widened culvert helps to keep Phragmites from taking over and helps to keep our native plants healthy. Mass Audubon's mission is protecting the nature of Massachusetts and it's been really helpful to have local students involved in the Mass Audubon Salt Marsh Science Project to help us monitor the health of local salt marshes and keep an eye on them over time. And because it's become a part of local school curriculum, it is ongoing. There's a lot of science research projects that and after just a couple years. So to have 17 years data is really exceptional. Over time, we began noticing a new invader, perennial pepperweed, showing up in local salt marshes. When I raised concerns about this with Newburyport middle schoolers, they chose pepperweed as their stewardship project to work on as part of the Newburyport Gulf of Maine Institute team. With their help, we mapped pepperweed and were thrilled to attract 70 volunteers to pull pepperweed for a total of 220 hours in that first year, 2006. Amazingly, that project has blossomed over time. Students and local citizens have helped map and control pepperweed in over 2,000 locations in the Great Marsh and beyond. Last year alone, we had over 1,500 volunteer hours helping us pull pepperweed in 1,000 sites. Salt marshes help reduce the risk of coastal flooding but as coastal storms increase and sea levels rise, salt marshes and coastal communities are at risk. In 2014, we started the Seeking Relief from Sea Level Rise Student Mapping and Leadership Initiative, where students use interactive maps to assess which areas in their community are most vulnerable. They discuss their concerns with local citizens and community leaders. Empowered student voices involved in this planning will help ensure their community's resilience into the future.